pool bridges. Cloud Bridges is a web-based application, uses browsers and web servers. Um, we have a website, obviously, cloudbridger.es, uh, where you can get the project source. It's under the GNU GPL. Um, it's based on an earlier project called O Social, which is made by a guy called Victor Kustanobla, but he's from France, he can't be here today. Um, I'm Edwin, I'm from the UK, and my biography is on the FOSDEM website. Uh, I'm going to start off by saying what the problem is that Cloud Bridges was trying to solve before I explain how it solves it. But it's about social networks and the problems people have been having with social network fatigue, having to keep joining new social network sites and not being able to move their information between sites. We're obviously not the first people to consider this problem. There's a group of people who have a project called Data Portability, and they've been looking into questions like this. Uh, they believe, obviously, you should own your data. Uh, and so their answer to these questions are that you should be able to import data into a social network or a site like that and be able to export it out again. Um, and the, the typical information is who your friends are, which you have to keep finding on each new site. Some of the ideas they've had for this portability um, is having an aggregator uh, where you'd have to give out your password to a site uh, and that would screen scrape uh, all the websites and aggregate all your information together. Um, which isn't very secure, um, or if everybody was a network where you'd have a blog and that becomes your social network profile, but you'd have no privacy that way. Um, uh, or a network of networks where you'd, uh, there, someone would create a new social network which came with the ability to talk to other social networks with a, an inter-network communication protocol, um, but that doesn't address the issue of already existing social networks. Or a, a social network subscribe models, uh, model, um, where you have one host that has the canonical copy of all your data and all the other social networks subscribe to that to get updates. Um, but I don't think existing social networks will want to do that. Our requirements are, are these things. Um, users should be able to stay on their current social network if they wish or switch to another social network at no cost. So it will be just like having an email account. <laughs> um, uh, but th this is just our opinion. Uh, we're just trying one possible solution. So fortunately, a standard has come along um, called Open Social, which is published by Google. Um, Google's social network use it, uh, along with MySpace, High Five, and some others, notably not Facebook, but it's something which social networks are implementing slowly. Um, it should allow an application writer to have access to nearly all the profile information which is stored on these social network accounts, um, uh, and features a, a becoming available over time. It's sort of in a beta stage right now. It's version 0.7. Um, the technology it uses is XML for the UI. It's got embedded HTML in it, and JavaScript for the interaction with the user and with the site. Um, it's kind of a missed ch chance for data portability. Um, Google haven't really given uh, the sort of functions you'd need to implement data portability as people were wanting. Um, for instance, it doesn't provide calls between social networks, uh, and it doesn't allow a site or a client to subscribe to data which is on the social network. It's only once you've actually logged into your profile page that these things can be activated. Uh, but things have been progressing since then. Although it's not designed for data portability, it does let data out in a standardized way. Um, so that means that a sort of data portability is possible uh, along the idea of uh, whatever isn't impossible is mandatory. Um, Victor saw that social networking data could be opened up through this. Um, so he coded an app using open social APIs, uh, made it known online, um, and he got 1,000 users uh, over time. Um, and then later I joined and we started working on the second generation design, which became Cloud Bridges. Um, also, because this was being popular uh, on news sites, someone asked us um, to give our information about it and uh, we were interviewed. Um, uh, we said that there, there are problems with social networks right now and that data portability did look like a good way to solve those problems uh, and it was already having some successes and the article was positive about us. So how did OSocial work? It was just like any other app to install on a social network page. Once it's installed, you could press a button 
uh, and then our open social website would receive your profile information and your list of friends and convert them into open formats um, so you could browse them from our site in an open way. Um, and we also had flash visualizations of your social graph so you could navigate who your friends are and who their friends are. Um, one thing to note about the technology is uh, an open social implementation provides a container, they call it, for apps, um, which is the base libraries, JavaScript libraries, for you to install your application into, and that provides methods like fetch person and make request. Um, it's not purely JavaScript, uh, otherwise there'd be cross-site scripting issues. Uh, you make these requests to the server itself, and then the server makes requests out to the third party. So how is CloudBridge different? Um, we added security, which is obviously important. Um, there are three levels of privacy. You can have data which is secret, which means we don't store it at all. Friends only, which means we only disclose it to people you say are your friends. And public, which means it's available on the front page of our website. Um, we had a concept of expiring links, where you'd be able to click a link, which is only valid for a certain period of time, where you could see people's information. And that meant you'd be able to revoke people's as you're being your friends, so the URL wouldn't keep working. Um, and that, those links were available in a friends list in the application itself. Um, and version 0.6 of the spec included the ability to sign requests to stop spoofing from happening, which some of the earlier uh, widgets had problems with. Uh, there have been some problems. There was the, the Scoble incident uh, involving Robert Scoble. I don't know if you know him. He has this Scobalizer blog. Uh, he was testing a, an app which is similar to ours for a social network website called Plaxo. Uh, he famously has 5,000 friends on Facebook, which is the limit that you can have on Facebook. And Facebook detected that this app was trying to download and leech all his friends, and they had some automatic block which um, cancelled his account. He was later reinstated after a lot of complaining, uh, but he had to promise he wouldn't do that sort of thing again. So there is resistance from social networks to this sort of idea. Uh, we say that we're currently just testing what the technology is capable of, and the open social implementations are just uh, sandboxes right now, so we haven't hit any problems yet. Let me go through a use case. Imagine Alice and Bob work together with Alice on MySpace and Bob on High Five, which is a sort of typical situation. Um, she wants her co-workers to know who her MySpace friends are, but Bob doesn't. Um, so she installs our CloudBridges app, and she tells the app her name and her thumbnail can appear on our website, so she sets that as public data. Um, the app asks her who her friends are, and so she can say Bob on High Five. She's not limited to people on MySpace. Um, and so CloudBridges stores this as an Alice to Bob relationship in the database. She says that that relationship is friends only, so that only someone who she says is her friend can see that. And then she invites Bob to uh, install CloudBridges on his account on MySpace, on High Five. So he does so. Um, but he decides to keep everything secret, um, and he marks Alice as a friend, but a secret friend. Um, then when he checks his CloudBridges friends list, the app sees the Bob to Alice friendship, and so she, it adds Alice's name to his list. Um, but because it also knows that Alice has a relationship to Bob, it adds uh, Alice's name becomes a link to a page on CloudBridges, um, which contains her unique number, the current timestamp, and a hash, so that the link would expire. Um, and that contains her personal information, which only Bob can see because he's been set as a friend. I'm now going to do a demonstration, hopefully. Here is our website, or one of the pages. You can select, this is the way that you normally install an app on one of these things. This is the sandbox version. So you want to add the application, add the application, add the application. There are some people I've already added, actually. Um, and then you would be able to add someone from a different social network. High five, add friend. Now add it to your, th I have to refresh the page. There's that person in the list, and then you can see them in CloudBridge's page with this expiring link.
And there they are, friend of Hagfish and Victor. Uh, there should be a profile image which hasn't loaded. Okay, so that's the sort of thing you can do, and then obviously you can follow these people and explore it. Um, okay, so one of the technologies we've been using is microformats. These are standardized ways of expressing a certain type of information that you might find on a web page. For instance, a person or a friendship or an event. Uh, they use valid HTML, like using the class attribute, um, semantically. Um, and they try not to come up with just arbitrary new standards. They try to standardize examples which are already found in the wild that people are actually using on websites. Um, and you can already get importers and converters and browser plugins which consume these formats for a lot of these formats. Um, so one example which we currently use is HCARD. If you know the VCARD format, it's like, it's like that. It describes a person, but it just uses HTML to do this. Um, XFN, it looks like a link on a web page, but it uses the rel attribute of links in the HTML spec. Um, and it gives you a fixed vocabulary of ways you can express a link between yourself and the person that's at the other end of that link. Um, HATOM is one we plan on implementing. It's like the Atom feed protocol. Um, so you could have an events feed like you find on a social network. Um, the only difficulty would be how you would s subscribe to something which has an expiring link, which we haven't solved yet. Uh, and the rel tag is another one we don't support yet. It allows you to have short tags which describe a current page, but if that page is your profile, then it's for describing yourself. Um, and it won't have a fixed vocabulary, um, which would be good for free text searching for people. So obviously we try to stop spoofing, which Open Social now supports. Um, it supports a, a protocol that's sort of based on OAuth, which is a, an open published specification. Um, OAuth was originally designed for mashups, for securely sending data between different services where you have an account. Um, for instance, you might want to import your photos from a photo sharing account into your social network, and you, you don't want to give your password for one of these sites to the other site. Um, the way Google does it is you specify key value pairs, um, which become part of a URL, and you specify the destination URL that you want to make this request to, uh, and then the container adds um, a hash to it using a public key, and there's a different public key per container, so you can verify that the container really did make that request. Um, and there are free OAuth, free software OAuth libraries out there which you can use. So how do we do it? Um, we're not doing a full web service. There's no SOAP or WSDL involved. Um, the app which you install into your social network site is the client, and it talks to the container, which is acting as a proxy for talking to our website at CloudBridges. Um, and it retrieves data which we generate by a PHP script on our server. Um, it's the, the container JavaScript libraries cause the browser to make XML HTTP requests, which is AJAX, um, for files on the social network domain itself, uh, rather than going directly to the third party, which would be cross-site scripting. Um, uh, originally, the Open Social API claimed it would support um, several formats for getting data, but it originally only supported JSON format. Um, so we started using that, and it, we found it's a good format. Um, it looks like an object dump as a string in JavaScript, uh, and you can call eval on it, which loads that string as an object into memory. Um, but obviously, if you're evalu evaluating arbitrary code, there are security issues. So there are parsers out there which parse the, the string first to check that everything's safe. So future possibilities. Um, we're all about removing requirements. So it, hopefully, CloudBridges makes it possible to go from having three social network accounts to only having one. Um, and we could even go to having zero social network accounts at all, if you didn't want to, um, by using OpenID, uh, which is a URL-based identity, um, and it's globally unique. Uh, so we wouldn't need to keep a database of accounts. We could just assume that you had an OpenID, uh, and you could log in with that to CloudBridges and see friends who had listed that OpenID as a friend. Um, and interestingly, as uh, Google have open-sourced um, the reference implementation for an open social container, Okay. 